The animation studio that brought you beloved family classic has now introduced a streaming service, Disney Plus. And now, from the same community that brought you Reactaholics podcast, comes a new show where we discuss Disney Plus content, old and new. Disney Plus Pals. Welcome to Disney Plus Pals. Let's just go before if something starts to happen again. I'd have to do some more and all the other stuff. Let's just go. Anyway, we are live. Sure, you're in charge. Do an intro. It's not my job today. (laughs) (sighs) Waking up, feeling evil. Feels really good. (sighs) Oh, wait, that's right. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, right. Turn on the camera. Duh. I don't know why. Part of me thought she was going to be covered in blood. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard. Like, okay, so Caleb wasn't filming, but uh, Cher came in and she was like, like talking, and then me and Caleb just hear punching sounds, assumedly <laughs> on like a like a punch sack. What do you call them? <laughs> a punch bag. A punch bag. I call them punch sacks. Uh, so same, yeah, same. I thought it was a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I said, Neil, just stop with the, the the dead jokes. You're beating a dead horse. And then I groaned because that joke is terrible. <laughs> Hello, frightful friends, frightful friends, frightful friends, frightful friends, frightful friends. Go away! You're not going to give a curse to us just because you weren't invited to a birthday party. You're not that spoiled. Yeah, I don't know about that, Cal. Eternal sleep sounds pretty good right now. Well, at least we wouldn't have to worry about uh, things we do when we wake up. Yeah, we wake up, all the new Marvel movies will be out. It'll be cool. <laughs> They're like a cryogenic stasis. Assuming that the... I'm Marvel... into this. Where is the spindle? <laughs> <laughs> the Marvel studio has also been under the curse. All right, Cher, what, what are we doing today? This is kind of your thing. I had an idea, an epiphany. It came to me in a sleep. I wanted to do something wicked today. Something disturbing. I knew she killed a guy. I knew it. I didn't kill anybody. That's yes. 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 <laughs> No, 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 it's just much worse than death. What could be worse than death and also (laughs) Disney related? (laughs) Well, today we are going to talk about Disney villains. (laughs) I like those. Those are pretty cool. Yes, yes, yes. And I will be asking each and every one of you some questions. Well, mainly Neil and Callum, because they're the only ones I could talk to. Yeah. Although, if you want to comment your answers, we'll, we'll read them. Yes. And I have oh, rules. Yeah. There's always rules. Comment down below. So, uh, the my quiz. show now. Not yours. This is my show now. I make up the rules. This is my show now. Not your show. <laughs> And she's got friends on the other side. They should all hit like, comment, and subscribe. Well, that was pretty good. Good job. Good job for me on that. Yes. So, today I will be asking you guys some questions. And depending on how long the question is, you're only going to get 10 minutes. If the question's like really long, because I don't want to keep you guys here all day, though I really want to. We could have so so much fun but i digress i don't want to torment you guys even though technically i'm wearing a maleficent outfit right now but still i will just, be reading out some questions just a minute ago said we were gonna, gonna encounter a fate worse than death <laughs> that that sounds pretty bad 
I'm assuming we're pitching the next Hollywood Maleficent movie. Is that what it is? Oh, God, that is a fate worse than death. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 sillies. No, no, no. It's quite simple, actually. I'm just going to ask you guys some questions, something about busy villains. Don't worry, it's not a test. It's a test. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. So I'm going to ask you guys some questions, and then we'll possibly be doing a Disney villain battle near the end. Oh! Ooh! Like, we pick a Disney villain each, and we gotta argue who would win in a fight? God damn it, you'll stop spoiling everything. I'm a smart boy, I'm sorry! (laughs) Do you have any idea how many mystery adventure visual novels this man has played? Not all of them yet, but eventually all of them. (laughs) Anyways, anyways, anyways. Shall we get started? All right, I'm ready. All right. Well, you and I shall go first because I'm the host. I have to be generous. Thanks. So, nice to see. You. It's going to be a welcome experience. Question number one. This is kind of a two-parter. Who it. is your favorite and least favorite Disney villain? Neil, you go first. Um, you see, I I always used to answer Hades. Like, I always thought Hades was the coolest one. But then it was brought to my attention that Hades doesn't actually do a ton in his movie. Like, he sends out monsters, but he himself doesn't do anything. And the real sticker for me was, he doesn't have a villain song. So, I think now I am answering it as a tie between Dr. Facilier. Uh, I think Dr. Facilier is one of the most active Disney villains we see. He has one of, if not the best villain song sequence I've ever seen ever, with all of like the visuals of him changing the future and his plan. And also, even though towards the end he does fail, he gets so close and actually does something a lot of Disney villains don't do, he kills one of the hero's allies. <laughs> like, he kills the lightning bug. So, I, I think Dr. Facilier is one of the best, and he is a trickster. He is cool to look at. His design is great. And I, I gotta be honest, I, <laughs> I fall for him every time. He is just so freaking fun to watch. And so, who is your least favorite Disney villain? Least favorite. Um, that's a big ask. Um, Time is ticking, honey. You got eight minutes and 40 seconds left. Are we Tick. allowed to pull from the oh, Disney sequels? Tick. To quote Dr. Facilier, you just need a little more time. <laughs> okay, then I guess Next my least player. favorite villain Game. is Mushu from Mulan 2. <laughs> He's not really a villain, darling. He's a but villain. he is a villain. He is actively the antagonist in that movie. He is the one sabotaging everybody. And the reason I hate him so much is because he is a good character. He's a good person that we've seen in the first movie. And yet he's actively trying to ruin this relationship. He is actively sabotaging the hope of all China just because he wants to keep his job. Like, he's betraying his friend of Mulan. I I do think Mushu is the villain of Mulan too, and if I'm not allowed to count it, I guess I won't count it. But uh, okay, yeah. Besides Mushu for the Disney sequels, who would be your other least favorite Disney villain? Um, I hate to say this because she is also one of my favorites, but it better not gonna... be. It better not be who you think I'm It's not to. Maleficent, and Thank it's not you. Evil Queen. Thank you. It is, unfortunately, Corella DeVille. Oh. Now, here's the thing. I would also argue that Corella DeVille has one of the best villain songs ever. Like, if she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. And I think Corella the DeVille is a really fun to watch and interesting character. But she's not a great villain because of one thing. Her goal in the movie is to kill dogs, which is fucked, but she fails. (laughs) She completely and utterly fails to kill these dogs. 
Her sidekicks are bumbling. She's bumbling. She doesn't succeed in the end. And she's not even going for, like, world, like, freaking domination or anything. She just wants to make a dress. <laughs> and I get that she's crazy and she's cool to watch. But in terms of, like, being a villain, her goals are too small. And she can't even achieve them. Like, if Corella was to go out and try to be, like, an actual villain, she'd fail hardcore. <laughs> like, she couldn't take over the world like freaking uh, Maleficent tries to do. She couldn't do any of what the other characters are doing. And I, I do love Corella because of her design and her songs, but, like, she's the one, one of the few characters that I'm like, once upon a time, did it way better, because, like, She's a killer in that one, and she's killing people. Okay. And no, I, yeah. I don't know. Okay, yep. yep, you're good. Thank you. You got five minutes and 40 seconds. Cal, go, and be quick about it. All right, so my favorite Disney villain of all time is George claude Frollo from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Just by the mere mention of that name, any of you who has even either heard of or seen Hunchback of Notre Dame, where do I even begin? I mean, not only is he voiced by the magnificent Tony J, uh, he's also uh, quite a legitimate, persistent threat throughout the entire movie. He pretty much drives like half of the plot. And sure, they did uh, change a few things from the original book. In the original book, he was uh, a priest, but they changed him to uh, a judge to make his role more understanding towards children. In, in the book, he was a tragic villain. Here, he's a straight-up villain. But, um... Hold on a second, I need to sort something out. Oh, Callum disappeared. <laughs> so, is oh. it my turn yet? Oh, no, you're about to go to your least favorite Disney villain. If you hurry, you got four minutes and 27 seconds. Well, while Callum is gone, I guess I will just quickly mention back hey. to Cruella de Vil. That, um... I'm still here. Oh, still here. are you gonna keep going? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Sorry, I had to do something there. So, okay. um... So, Judge Claude Frollo, um... He's a persistent threat, and, um... I've noticed something about him when he was older. When you watch him as a judge, you think, Ooh, he's a scary guy. Um, but watching him when he's older, he's kind of scary because, from a certain perspective, he's kind of in the right, but at the same time, you can still see the, the hypocrisies behind it. You still think, I can understand what he's getting at. It's good to uh, get rid of all these, like, thieves and bandits, but the way he's doing it, it's anything but righteous. <laughs> and, um, there's other things like that. Who's your least favorite yeah. business? I was going to mention how he was quite nuanced in his personality and his song is epic. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's all I need to say. My least favorite, um, I was boggling through my mind which one it could be. I would have to say uh, Screen Slaver from Incredibles 2. Uh, should I spoil who the twist villain is? Eh, whatever. Let them spoil it all. Go. But you got three minutes left. Go. Right. Evelyn Dever. I mean, uh, it's not that um, her motives are bad per se, but the twist, it could have had a bit more time to develop. And um, I think we should have seen more of a um, sort of characteristic leading up to this. This kind of came out of nowhere and um, everyone was getting tired of this cliche that uh, Disney had been promoting for some time. No, oh, trust me, we'll get to that cliche later on in this video. Okay. I think that's all that needs to be said. Sorry, I got uh, carried away uh, there. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Well, clearly you can see who my favorite Disney villain is. Clearly. By the way, yeah, that I'm yes, her. That's obviously Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wish. <laughs> no, yes, Maleficent. May they say more. She's the mistress of all evil. She will trick you the spinning wheel and die she has a great voice she's voiced by the same character the same lady that did lady tremaine she is cunning and evil and malicious and that's why i love her plus she gets to turn to a dragon at the end 
only to get stabbed in the heart and, you know. As for my least favorite Disney villain, it's a combination between uh, Edgar from Aristocats. I just think he's incompetent and an idiot. I don't like Prince John from Robin Hood. He's too whiny. And Madame Medusa from The Rescuers, well, who's she? What was her motivation again? Something about a diamond and all that? And lame! You guys lame. are going way more in-depth with uh, your Disney villain dislikes than I did. <laughs> I was like, I was literally just like, okay, here, here's the one of the big ones that is not as good as the others. But you guys are like, oh no, here are actual bad ones. And I'm like, oh no, I offended everybody. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Ooh, I like this question. Uh, by the way, I read all the questions. <laughs> it's hard to choose my favorite. <laughs> huh. Who is the most underrated villain? Neil. Ooh, Time starts. Uh, Ten minutes. Go. I got this answer right off the bat. bat. Uh, it, it is Yzma. Yzma by far is the most underrated villain. And I actually was going to bring up that, like, one of my issues with Corella Deville was actually solved with Yzma, where they are very similar characters. They're crazed and outgoing in their goals. But Yzma actually seems to, like, have a lot of progress in it. For a good amount of time, she succeeds. And the only reason her plan fails is because Kronk is a bit of a bumbler. Yzma, from the beginning, is a talented scientist who is making these potions that can turn people into animals. And I think she really has a, a big personality where she can stand with the bigger ones. Like, I could see Yzma taking over the world. I couldn't see Corella doing it. And I, I just oh, love her. She's a great personality, great design. Oh, no. She's great. <laughs> That's oh, not right. it. Callum. Callum. Oh, whoops. You're about to do your conk impression. Go ahead. Go on. Do your conk impression. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Yzma probably wouldn't have gone far without me, at, at least in terms of the, uh, the, the appeal of uh, how the uh, film eventually turned out. Also, I heard Yzma was originally going to sing a song in the uh, original version of Emperor's New Groove. But don't worry, we got that covered in uh, other media of the Emperor's New Groove. Yep, thank you, Earth the Kit. You were a true genius and very, very beautiful woman. I had a great singing voice. May you rest in peace. So, yeah. so who do you, you think? Kit. Who do you so, think is the most underrated, Callum? Um, I think the most underrated Disney film has to be Long John Silver from Treasure Planet. Yes, and the reason why is because much like Frollo, he's actually got quite a dynamic personality, and you actually kind of root for him. He's um a bit of um, quite a good relationship with the main character. Something you hardly see in a lot of Disney films. So it was quite bold to see a character in that position in that movie where when you feel the conflict, um, you, you feel genuinely sorry for him at times. Like, there's a scene where um, he's uh, done a, a mutiny, but then he waves a white flag to talk, and he's talking to Jim about taking a share of the treasure. If he was a typical villain, you wouldn't trust him. But with uh, Silver, I I think he legitimately means it. I think he really wants uh, Jim to get along with it, but then Jim refuses. I think he's genuinely heartbroken that they're not getting along. So he'll blast them all time. God, I love that voice as well. Um, and he's also a bit of a father figure for Jim, which uh, yeah, yeah, also, to Jim's father, you know you did a bad job on a ruthless pirate does a better job of being a dad than you did. Just saying. Alright, my turn. Sorry, I'm eating the graham cracker. This is really good. My favorite, er, I think the most underrated Disney villain would have to be Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. He is voiced by the legendary Vincent Price, who you may recognize in uh, a lot of horror stuff, and was the monologuer in uh, Michael Jackson's thriller. He was I also 
the zigzag in the thief and the cobbler. Yes, he was. And I believe that was one of his last few roles before his untimely demise. But still, I think, I don't know, there's just something about Rogan that I just love. He's trying to be charismatic and sophisticated, but deep down the side, he's just a lunatic. And <laughs> he's just crazy. I don't know. I just love him about that. He Plus, he has a really great song, The World's Greatest Criminal Mind. And uh, be careful, people. Do not call him the, the R-word. Because if you call him the R-word, he'll send his cat to eat you. Racist. <laughs> Rat. <laughs> Come at me, kitty. <laughs> so, yes, Radigan is my, uh-uh. Well, I think Radigan is the most underrated Disney villain, in my opinion. We all have opinions. I have still yet to see that movie, but based on what everyone says about Radigan, that, that might be a very popular opinion. Yes. Hopefully we can do a Disney Plus Pals episode about that one later in the future. Oh, we will, we will. But, all right. next question? Next question! Ooh, this one's... Off with your answers! <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Who is the creepiest villain? Neil? Ooh. Creepiest. Well, uh, I think now it's time for me to talk about Judge Frollo a little bit. Um... <laughs> Judge Frollo, like, there's a lot of creepy villains. I would even ar argue Dr. Facilier and Yzma can both be pretty creepy in their own right. But in terms of creepy villains, uh, it doesn't get creepier than Frollo. <laughs> Frollo, of course, has an attraction to Esmeralda, and it's not a good one. <laughs> Like, there are scenes of him, like, talking about her during Hellfire and how he is screaming about how it's driving him to sin. And you can just tell that there is, like, something pent up in him that is creepy and you don't want any part of it. And you have to watch him. Like, that's his main motivation as a villain. His attraction for Esmeralda. And it's so just weird to watch it's uncomfortable at times and frollo really like i think goes the extra mile to be scary like especially because like he is a religious figure and because of that it adds this aspect of like how callum was saying frollo thinks he's one of the good guys and he is not <laughs> he is not doing what the good guys do he is doing what the worst of the worst do. <laughs> and it is driving him to literally set fires to Notre Dame. So I, I think Frollo is by far the creepiest villain. But yeah. I'm curious yeah. to see your answers. Tell him. You gotta take into account that hypocrites are the worst. But speaking of uh, religious figures, I'm going to take a look, delve into... Fantasia for something that scared me in my teenage years. Yeah, teenage years. Let that sink in. Yeah. Let me going... guess. It's Chernabog, right? Chernabog from Night on Bald Mountain. Oh my goodness gracious gravy! That gave me the heebie-jeebies. Just the whole presentation, the music, the spooky imagery. I mean, and the design, the grotesque design, those glowing eyes. The the way he just takes the frame, everything about it just screams, this is creepy. You should I mean, run. I mean, what's scarier than Satan? What's scarier than Satan? <laughs> yeah, this is just pure darkness. And, and uh, Fantasia had the artistic liberty to go that extra mile, like you said before uh, there, Neil. And um, it's, uh, it's very minimal, of course, being a Fantasia presentation in terms of what the plot is, but they make the most of it. They really do, and he only goes away with the sound of the bells, followed by the Ave, Ave Maria segment, which concludes Fantasia, so even though it is scary, it, it is quite a spectacular finale, to say the least. Excellent. Excellent. <sighs> For me, I say the creepiest Disney villain, in my opinion, would have to be the Horn King from Black Cauldron. 
Yes, I know Black Cauldron is not a good film. It's it's really not a good film. It's ooh, especially that little hairball. Gurgi. Ooh. I remember. Gurgi. Stop being Gurgi. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyways, uh, yes, Horn King. He just his presence gives me the heebie-jeebies. It took me like years just to rewatch the Black Cauldron. I was afraid of skeletons because of the Black Cauldron. No offense, most of the bones. We're still <laughs> friends. It's hold up for a second. Hey, 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 come here. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but Horror King, man. It's creepy as heck. Red glowing eyes, and especially his death scene. Like, that was like a Thanos snap right there, and it just tore off his flesh. And wow, wow, Cher. Ligaments. You are being so rude to skeletons. Do you not even realize there's a skeleton inside of you right now? Jeez. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, Mr. Bone. I'm sorry, Skeletor. I'm sorry, Skeleton King from Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go. I am sorry to all the skeletons. Benny from Halloween Town, but... Yeah! I'm sorry, but... Papyrus. But that's okay. I still like your spooky, scary skeleton song. Never be. We skeletons will never be put down. <laughs> spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrinking skulls will shock your souls and seal your doom tonight. Yes. Don't worry, honey. I'll, I'll I'll see you tomorrow for Halloween Frights and Spooky Nights. Hopefully we can do the Fairly Odd Parents tomorrow, I promise. Anyways, uh, yes, yeah, so I think the Horn King. Creepy. It's a good pick. Heart voice. Mm. That death scene. Speaking of death scenes, who had the cruelest death? Neil. Oh, my. Clayton. Yeah. Clayton had the cruelest death. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Look, there's some screwed up deaths. Hades falls into the river stick, it sticks and is trapped there forever. Friggin', uh. He dies. He's just, he's just stuck there. Yeah, if he wanted to, he could literally just, you know, get out. <laughs> Eventually. I, I do think Hades is still out there, honestly. Uh, yeah. But of course, Ursula got skewered to death with a boat. Um. But but I think Clayton really takes the cake because, first of all, mob of gorillas attacking you. <laughs> That's one thing. Freaking facing off with Tarzan, who is a brutal fighter. That's another thing. Falling and being hung by vines. That takes the cake. <laughs> like, jeez! As a kid, that is the only Disney death that legitimately scared me. Because even though Clayton was, like, a villain, like, that's sort of the thing. These deaths have to be cruel to the point where you, you sort of forget for a minute that they're a villain and just feel bad for them. And admittedly, when, like, Maleficent got stabbed, like, I thought she deserved it. She was an evil, like, dragon person. I still think Clayton deserved to die, but how he died... <laughs> was just so extreme to me. I just, I will always remember the visual of Clayton's shadow. Oh. That is going to stick with me forever. <laughs> and I, I think that's the real judge of these things. Callum? Uh, Callum, what do you think? Oh. Oh. Darn. I, oh. Um. Evil and death. I mean, there's so many different types of death. You could, I don't know, Mortal Kombat fatality thing to them, but uh, I'm trying to think, which one was the most brutal? Which one was I mean, like? If you think about it, Scar got eaten and mauled to death by freaking hyenas. Yeah. yeah. Goth will turn into dust while falling off a tower. Yeah. And, and then there's Hans who who didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you already made a joke in that when we did the Hocus Pocus review. You're like, Han should be impaled by an ice cream or something. Oh, yeah. Fucker should be dead. 
Um, I think I've figured out one. I mean, I suppose we've already mentioned a few, but I think we're going to endorse Edna Mode's uh, fashion philosophy. No caps. No caps. No caps. No caps. No yes. caps. What? He talked about various heroes who had unfortunate incidents, all because the cape was blowing them back. There's, um, it's functionality over uh, aesthetics, you see. This is what Syndrome failed to realize. In the moment when he tried to kidnap Jack-Jack to be his future assistant, uh, Jack-Jack got out of his grasp, got saved by Elastigirl, Mr. Incredible tossed a car uh, up at his ship, causing him to stumble, and then he tried to get away from a fan. How did he get stuck in the fan? The cape tore him to shreds. Not that we see him get torn to shreds, but, you know, that happened before there, there, being blown to smithereens. There is also some poeticness to the fact that he died because of his cape. Like, capes have always been viewed as one of the big icons of a superhero. And all he wanted to be was Mr. Incredible Sidekick, his friend. And yet, here we are. He's chosen the role of a villain. And that very dream is what ended up sealing his fate. And that is signified by the fact that, like, he's turned to the dark side. He's holding a villain. He's a baby. He's monologuing. And what's the thing that takes him out? The one thing that all the superheroes are dropping. He's cape. I think justice indeed. That was totally wicked! Murder always is, kiddo. <laughs> I uh, go ahead, sure. I guess I'm gonna have to jump on the bandwagon with Clayton because, yeah, watching Tarzan just God, I had to close my eyes on that scene. I was just like, sometimes like I actually had nightmares of being hung. It just wasn't pretty. And then there's Ursula's death, which I also found like like that. So. Yeah, and Scar getting mauled, and Gotha turning into dust, and... Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, but I have to go with Clayton. Clayton just... His screams, and then it's just like... And then you see nothing but his shadow. It's just... Yes. Yes. But let's stop talking about death. We already have a Grim Reaper here. Yeah. So, let's do something more comedic. You guys like comedy, right? Oh, yes. We revel so, in it. who is the funniest Disney villain? Neil, you spot Ritzy. Hey, he left. <laughs> okay. Uh, Callum, I guess we'll go to you. Oh, I mean... There's so many really funny ones. Um, I could pick... Um, there's several that come to mind. Uh, I mean, some of them are actually kind of hated among the Disney ones, but they, for me, they make up in, with the comedic value, but I'll build up to what I think is the funniest. Um, there's um, there's Edgar from the Aristocats. People say he's kind of sloppy, but I think he's kind of funny in his bumbliness. Uh, there's Prince John. I, I find the fact that he's a, a, the fact that he's a kind of a spoiled baby... <laughs> <laughs> it always cracks me up. Um, Yzma and Kronk are pretty are some of the funniest characters in that movie, but I think Neil probably go for him. But I suppose um, if I'm to pick probably the funniest, I'd probably have to pick the bowler hat guy from <laughs> Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> There's just some scenes where I remember being my cousin almost losing it to some of the scenes he's in. He's got this. Even though he's got a grudge against the main character, he has this sort of childish seriousness, which kind of tragically pulls into why he's motivated to get him in the first place. But um, some of his, the things he does to achieve his goals is just... Oh, cracked me up as a job back then. Thinking about it, I still find it funny now. So um, there'll be a scene where they're sneaking around, but then they'll say, Oh, look what I found, Donis! It's a sneak! <laughs> and he's doing other... Um, mathematical problems with the stick and just coupled with the fact that he's got the stereotypical look um there's a scene he's spying on the character and he's thinking of thinking hmm 
a way to get him out of the house. Oh, I know! I'll burn it down! Yes! Yes, I... Oh, no, wait. No, I need him alive. All right, so burning it down won't do any good. And Neil... Neil! Neil you Love have it. resurrected from the dead! Was it because of the... the no, I'm sorry. Oh, Neil. Yeah, I die every Tuesday. <laughs> Today's <laughs> Thursday, darling. Yeah, I know. I was late this time. <laughs> he knows well, nothing. We were just so talking the about the funniest Disney villain. Uh, Callum went with the bowler hat guy from Meet the Robinsons. Well, as I was saying, he I then think... said, uh, hmm. Um, then the bowler hat guy said, hmm, what should I do? Oh, I know! I'll turn him into a duck! Yes, it's evil! <laughs> no, wait. I don't really know how to turn him into a duck. <laughs> this is so many ridiculous stuff. And I remember the scene. I remember watching it with my cousin, where he's um throwing like eggs at the meet the Rob at the Robinson Industries, and then he monologues just when I was about to destroy Robinson Industries. And he's carrying a toilet roll. <laughs> um, I got two picks for this. Yeah, both of them are a little different from what we are talking about right here. But I'm going to answer them number nonetheless. I guess I'll find out whether or not these count. But um, uh, I want to pick, and technically this character has been in movies, so I definitely think they should count, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the mentioning of his name. TV movie, so... Uh, a movie. Does that count? I count it. <laughs> He's been in several kind of movies. Ruthless. You sure? Okay. <laughs> Go proceed. Well, Dr. Doofenshmirtz by far is a hilarious character, and if I have to exclusively pull from the movies, I will. Just look at his interaction with himself from another dimension. One of the funniest songs I have ever heard is I Found a New Best Friend and It's Me. Like, immediately when you hear the name Dr. Doofenshmirtz, you immediately think, Ah, Perry the Platypus. <laughs> it just goes through your head, the whole thing. He has so many running gags that are hilarious. His songs are always top-notch, whether he is a <laughs> Sith Lord, whether he is a demonic character, or whether he is dressing up as the Wicked Witch from the West. Doofenshmirtz comes to play with a scheme, a song, and a very funny atmosphere. I love Dr. D. And plus, he's got a good relationship with his daughter. He's got really cool story potential there. I, Dr. Doofenshmirtz, funniest villain in my opinion. Yeah, I just remember me and my sister just cracking up with hysterical laughter when he was singing, there's a platypus controlling me. <laughs> you have to hear it for yourself. It, beyond anything. Yes, so... And I'm glad you talked about Dr. Davidson's works. We'll, we'll, we'll get to him later. Um, well, the other villain I was going to bring up actually has nothing to do with movies, TV shows, or movies at all, unless you count one movie starring Eddie Murphy. I was going to pick Madame Leota. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's a specific version of Madame Leota. So many well, I'm are specifically get... picking Madame Leota from The Haunted Mansion. She's witty, love... she's hilarious, and she is definitely a villain. Like, it's definitely insinuated that she had a bunch of people in the mansion killed. And I think she is just really interesting, and it's cool to see, like, Maleficent. The voice of Maleficent is Leota. <laughs> Do all of these rhymes and jokes and gags. And she's still intimidating while being funny, so... I gotta give it to Leota. I think if nothing else, she should be an honorable mention. <laughs> oh, you, you really can't beat the whole Dr. Doofenshmirtz, like, I really don't hate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Got the holiday snap till later. Uh, what do you think, uh, Cher? What, what's your opinion here? Yes. You don't have I've an answer, got do you? 24 hours to get rid of this bozo for the entire scheme I've been setting up for 18 <laughs> years. It goes up in smoke, and you are wearing his merchandise! Oh. <laughs> 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 Hades, you're 
eighties is a good pick. Eighties, yes, eighties is I think the funniest that he I don't know, just any line that he says besides his intimidating moment, but like anything else is just hilarious. <laughs> It's just so funny how he gets so angry and just has a lot of anger issues and just starts blowing up some stuff. I just love Hades. James James Woods is so funny. I'm I'm so glad he's, he didn't he didn't stop playing Hades in just the movie. He was in the he was in T V series, he was in Kingdom Hearts. He's, yeah. I just freaking love James Woods as Hades. He's so funny. <laughs> According to James Woods, this this is a testament to how good the character really is. According to James Woods, the reason that he keeps coming back to do Hades is simply because he loves the character. Like, he loves him so much, he will jump on it whenever he has the opportunity to play Hades. <laughs> yeah, it's great. To, I mean, the, I love the dedication of the whole Disney cast in general reoccurring, even for Kingdom Hearts, but I love in Kingdom Hearts Kingdom Hearts, he just, like in the movie, he just has this I'm so done attitude, especially in relevant in Kingdom Hearts 3, where he's been there, done that, had a boss fight. <laughs> he's thinking, oh, okay, it's just you three. Oh, they <laughs> literally says that. <laughs> and um, he even sees the same villains. He's like, okay, no, I'm done with you as well. I'm just going to go back to my original plan to take over Olympus. You can just go away with the Heartless. <laughs> He's a good manipulator, too, Hades. Like, he had Meg wrapped around his finger. Um, but next question. Hey, I swore enough manhandling. <laughs> next question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fun fact, I believe, I remember watching this, like, the behind the scenes. Originally, Hades was supposed to be, like, serious, like, you know, like, Jafar and Scar. But then, like, uh, James Woods came in and kind of did, like, this, like, impression of, like, a car salesman. And that yeah. they were like, yeah, they, I, you're good. You, 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 really you, good. you now Hades. Good, good for you. Good for you. It works. Yes. It really works. Who feels like singing? Uh, bad people. Bad people don't like singing. Well, that is the next question. It's actually a two-parter. It is actually a two-parter. Cool beans. What is your favorite Disney villain song? And wh which YouTuber does the best Disney villain covers? Oh. I know Ooh. the answer to at least the cover part. <laughs> um, but um, if I am, am I still going first or is Callum going first now? <laughs> you go first. I'm making up my mind. Okay. Um... You know, I already talked about this a little bit, but, um, like, I think that Hellfire is a good song. I love Hellfire. I think it's really good. I also think that Hellfire is effective because it doesn't have a ton of visuals. It's really just, um, it's really just Frollo and the Flames. But I am sorry. Friends on the other side makes the whole movie of Princess and the Frog better. Like, the fact that Friends on the Other Side is there improves the movie and literally tells us everything we need to know about Dr. Facilier in one song. To the point where most people don't even know his name. They just call him the Shadow Man. <laughs> because this big scene is so, like, recognizable as him. That it's more popular and more well known than his name. Like the fact that he's just subtly getting them into his scheme where he's like, oh, hey, send on down. Oh, those shadows moving? That's just a parlor trick. Don't worry about that. The entire time he is just smooth, controlled. He knows he's going to succeed, but he's having some fun with it. And then that line where it's like, come on, boys, shake my hand. Can't you trust an old sinner's hand? And then, yes! Are you ready? It is the next level. It is so cool, and the way where he's like, the green, the green, yes, the green you seek. Dr. Facilier, this whole song is manipulating, having a ball with it, and telling us exactly who he is. And 
I can't get over it. <laughs> Even the part where he's like, you're changing, you're changing, you're changing, all right. I hope you're satisfied. But if you're not, uh, don't blame me. You can blame my friends on the other side. You got what you wanted, but you got your head. <laughs> See, we are literally humming it just when we're talking about it. Like, it is uncontrollably good. <laughs> I, uh, play this, I play this song every year on Halloween during this time. I just... It has a spooky atmosphere, so. Now, who is your, uh, or I guess, which one, you know, which YouTuber has the best cover to the villain songs? Um, well, there's a lot of good ones. There, there are some that you wouldn't immediately think of. Like, uh, me and Callum have this YouTuber we really like who does stuff with puppets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you can find him by searching Dab Chick. Yeah, um, Dab Chick. <laughs> but um he did a cover of uh Oogie Boogie song with a really stretchy and cool puppet and it's so cool but we're not there for his singing we're there for the cool puppet even though his singing is really good of course you got Cal Caleb Hiles you got Anna Pantsu you got the good ones but if you want a good villain song <laughs> you gotta go to Jonathan Young <laughs> <laughs> I, that's my answer <laughs> that's pretty much my answer yeah, I, I've been listening to Jonathan Young since before he got big like I think I found his channel when he did uh, I'll Make a Man Out of You uh, heavy and metal. he's done most of the villain songs he's done Friends on the Other Side he's done Shiny he's done Hellfire Shiny's another really good one though <laughs> <laughs> He has by far the best voice for this. He's doing metal. He's making these villain songs a little more intimidating. Granted, I think Friends on the Other Side specifically, um, I think it's supposed to be kind of soothing and calming. That way, Dr. Facilier can slowly trick you into going for your deepest desires. But it is also really cool when he's just like yelling, The Cards! <laughs> Yeah, Jonathan Young, all the way. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Cal. Favorite Disney villain song? Um, that is often a tough one to pick, because for a lot of people, they tend to be the... I mean, um, the majority of musical numbers are the highlight of any given Disney movie, mind you. Um... I mean, the Disney villains is one of the main highlights. Um, I mean, I could pick Hellfire, but Neil has already mentioned why that's so great. So, what other Disney villain songs are that worth mentioning? I mean, there's so much to mention, but you know what? I'm just going to mention this one just, just because it's on my mind. And it's quite a fun song. I'm just going to pick Gaston, because even though it's not going to... It's, it's, I like how it's not got a sinister tone, in, which is suitable for the character, because this is meant to be a character who's meant to appear, and not, not wink wink, appear heroic to the town's eyes, even though, according to the lyrics, you can sense that, yeah, he's just an a egomaniacal jerk. And the, the, the lyrics are just really, really fun lyrics that... Uh, the the pub setting and um and just Gaston's boasting just uh just elevates his his ego just a lot more and uh, everyone's just joining in in this sort of uh, waltz with him uh, uh pub uh shanty song of some sort yes it it also adds like a new layer to the mob song that happens later when like you already like. You kind of need Gaston to establish that, like, everybody in town sees this guy as a hero. So when the mob song happens later, you kind of get why everybody is following him. Like, that's the ma man who eats five dozen eggs every morning so he can grow large. <laughs> of course we'd follow him to death. Five dozen eggs so he's roughly the size of a bird! I also like that LeFou gets to sing it because not a lot of Disney sidekicks get songs. Especially not like a role in the villain song. 
episode. So are you just gonna are you, are you just gonna agree that Jonathan Young with the Disney villain covers? Um, <laughs> or, or yeah. Barbie? Um, Barbie Dixon's uh, um, cover of uh, Oogie Boogie Man is just brilliantly fantastic. Not just, but, well, <laughs> I just like how he gets run over by a train. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant Add Love some it. much needed comeuppance to Oogie Boogie. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've heard uh, plenty of uh, really intriguing, spooky covers of uh, Come Little Children from uh, Hocus Pocus. I've seen a variety of people on YouTube uh, uh, sing that uh, infamous tune from uh, from the Hocus Pocus movie. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a, I think her, is her name Yurtin? E R U T A N. I think she does kind of like an extensive version. She does change a little bit of the lyrics, but it's still pretty haunting. And I like her version as well. As Here, for. Does some cool stuff with uh, yep. Come Little Children. Want to go ahead, share? For me, I know everyone's like, what about Be Prepared? Be prepared for the Lion King. That's the best Disney villain song. Or Hellfire. Sure. I mean, to be fair, Be Prepared is pretty great. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. But I'm not going for those ones. Those are too obvious. I'm going for another obvious one. One that we haven't mentioned yet. Okay. <laughs> Are you already singing it? Why are you always have to ruin my moments? Skip the drama, stay with mama. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, is it not Mother Knows Best? <laughs> but it's a really good villain song, yes. Uh, Donna Donna Murphy is a really good... That, that's a really good song by uh, Don, Donna Murphy. No, but, it, but it's, a, it's still a pretty good villain song, but I'm not talking about that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. then I do know what you're about to say, but I won't say it out of respect. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like singing. And you can sing along if you want to, though I won't try to do the whole thing. <clears throat> I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They were kidding when they called me well a witch. But you find it now in days. I admit it all my ways. Repent to see the light and made a switch to this. And I fortunately know of little magic. Is a talent that I always have possessed. And a lady, please don't laugh. I use it on behalf of the miserable, the lonely, and the press. Pathetic. Oh, unfortunate <laughs> soul. In pain. In me. Uh, one song in TV Center. That one wants to get the girl. And do I help them? Yes. Yes, indeed. indeed. Those oh, unfortunate souls. So sad. So true. <laughs> They've been calling my father's trying to spell such a please, and I help them. Yes, I do. Now it happens once or twice. Someone couldn't pay the price, and I'm afraid I had to break them across the cold. Yes, I had the arc of plate, but on the whole, I've been a saint to those poor unfortunate souls. Have you asked? Clap, 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 clap. I kind of messed up a little bit, but I still freaking love the song. Oh, goodness. Pat Carroll, So, man. obviously, she is picking uh, Corella DeVille. <laughs> Good pick. <laughs> Good pick. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Poor Unfortunate Souls from The Little Mermaid. Uh, freaking Pat Carroll. Oh, my gosh. I think she's in her 80s or 90s right now, but she... Oh, my gosh. God, I freaking love Ursula. I mean, not as much a small episode, but Ursula, second close female villain. She's yeah. also going with the rules, even throughout Kingdom Hearts as well, yes. Yes, yes, oh, just people. song. I mean, it starts out like your typical, like, Disney villain song. It's, like, very sinister and, and, like, a little bit quiet, but, like, near the end, it just gets all big and dramatic. Yeah. And massive. It's, yes, it's more massive. It's just, it's very massive. And it's because it's, obviously Ursula has a very big, massive ego, mm. like personality, and like, ooh, she is just good. This is one of my favorites. Yes, I like you know, be prepared and Hellfire, but poor fortunate souls, man. I mean, better read the fine print, y'all, or you'll I think, be the next sore, poor soul. 
I think like, Ursula is honestly one of the most iconic Disney villains. Like, she's one of the most original. And that voice, just man. Just bubbled up the divine. We are, like, that voice is unshakable as Ursula. Like, if she didn't keep re reprising the role, I don't think it would be Ursula. <laughs> like, honestly. And, of course, that iconic laugh. Her laugh oh, yeah. is so iconic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my imitation of it. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it either. It's too powerful for me. It's like, aha, cock! Oh, that's freaking Pennywise from the older Ant <laughs> series. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it's amazing how uh, intense she gets, especially at the end. Does the end part of the song where she says, sing, can't just part of the song as well? Yes, right. exactly. Yes, so it's it's like you know, her little spell, little laryngitis forte to me now. See, I'm like you can see it in her eyes. It's like the hypnotic, and I'm like, I'm like, are you trying to put me in a trance? I, I think are you trying weirdly, to put in a trance? <laughs> I think weirdly enough, some of the best villain songs have to do with manipulation because literally, all of the songs we have just mentioned. Uh, I guess Gaston being the least of which, but it still plays a role during the mob song, so I would say it still counts. Uh, yeah, all of these songs the deal with manipulating. One would probably be like Mother Gothel because she's mm. trying to have Rapunzel stay inside because Mother knows best. I just love the line of skip the drama, stay with Mama. <laughs> that <laughs> that line is always Mama funny. Mama, stay with Mama. Mother! knows best. That's very similar to Gaston in the upbeat tone, which of course is I got some ominous undertones underneath. Uh, and, then when she, and then when she comes back at the end, like when the Stabbington brothers like are about to attack Rapunzel and she's going to do the manipulation thing where she's like, oh Rapunzel, I saved you, where she just goes, mother knows best and she holds it and she actually does it big and booming, and you're just like, oh, shit, she's the villain, isn't she? Yeah, like the <laughs> priest, yeah, definitely the priest, she's like, no. Oh. No. Rapunzel knows best. Rapunzel's so mature now. Rapunzel's a grown-up miss. I, <laughs> I'm I so mature it. now. Go ahead and give him this. I mean, unfortunately, she hasn't popped up a ton in this specific discussion, but Mother Gothel damn good villain uh next question next question yes so let's see where are we oh by the way shout out to uh patty cake productions those guys great especially with the villain flair i gotta show you their stuff callum you'd like it's really good it's it's really good. I was listening to their song before we started. Uh, fun fact, when I made the Descendants character designs that I did for R.I.P., I was listening to Patty Cake Productions. So <laughs> maybe they unintentionally helped me create our characters. So I guess we'll see. Patty Cake Productions, you guys are true genius. We love your villain uh, player and your Princess Academy and all your other ones. I can't name with the top of my head, but yes. Teamwork you, makes the scheme work. You've done everything great. What? A nine for a nine. A wrong. A wrong for, for a wrong. wrong. Never forgive, never forget. This is your last regret. What goes around comes, comes around. All right, next question, though. Congratulations, Neil. You mentioned this before. Now we're going to mention it again. Uh -huh. How do you feel about Disney sequel villains? Um, Mushu is the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, here I am just sitting here like, okay, who's a good Disney sequel villain? I don't know. <laughs> I... Literally, I was about to, like, suggest, well, I kind of like Lady Kane from the Rapunzel series. But that's Zero. not really... Zero. That's not really, like, a, um... A sequel villain, even. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think the most memorable one is, honestly, Ursula's sister. 
And even then, I only know who she is because she's Ursula's sister. Ursula's crazy. She's voiced by Pat Carroll. Pat Carroll voices both Ursula and Morgana. Yeah, agreed. Um, actually, I guess I do have one Disney sequel villain I like, but it's a weird pick. <laughs> um, Callum, Callum, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Uma. Yes, I like Uma. <laughs> Uh, Uma, like, she's from Descendants 2, she's a good character, she's neat. Even then, this isn't a glowing compliment, because Uma's weird. <laughs> Freaking uh, Audrey from Descendants 3, she's also weird, although I love Queen of Mean. I love Queen <laughs> But there's one character that will always be in my heart, and he is a Disney villain, and he is in a Disney sequel. So I pick Harry Hook, just because any time I can, I will always pick Harry Hook. Harry Hook is <laughs> And he is a sequel vill- villain. He, he, do- he, he only shows the- up in the sequels. <laughs> You're All right. <laughs> And he is a villain at first. Like, in the third one, he becomes kind of an anti-hero. But he is a villain at first. <laughs> he chews someone else's gum. How villainous is that, man? <laughs> oh, Harry, 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 Harry. Oh, goodness, Harry. He's ravishing. Yes. Uh, do yes, you guys Tom have any other Tom opinions? Dortry. Yes, Thomas Dortry. You and Dove Cameron, man, you guys, you guys are lucky. <laughs> Do you guys have any other sequel opinions besides Harry Hook is dope? Because <laughs> that's my yeah. only opinion. My ravishing little duckling. That he is. That he is. <laughs> well, I would say I think the best, in my opinion, the best Disney sequel villain. If we're not counting like you know Disney Channel or whatever, we're talking about like the direct the DVD Disney sequel. I would say Zero. Zero from Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, is probably arguably the best sequel villain. Like, her, her song, My Lullaby, it's, pro- in my opinion, I think it's equally up there with, with Be Prepared. She's more cunning, more vicious, mm. and the way that she speaks, like, oh my god, it's, it's like nails, and it's like... It's she something. is a good villain. She is a good villain. Although, in hindsight, I, we could also technically pick Jafar here. <laughs> uh, I thought Jafar... I didn't really like Jafar in Return of Jafar. For those of you who had, who don't know, if you don't follow me on Stardust, you should. JK, you know, whatever. But uh, anyways, for my birthday this year, I reacted to some of the Disney direct dvd sequels. Some of them were good. Some of them were... Along too. Yeah. I don't know why you're making the distinction. Best Disney movie ever, 2020. Come at me. (laughs) Hunchback 2. And then others were in the middle. So, uh, yeah, Disney sequel villains. Like I said, Zira is good. She's probably the best one. (laughs) I don't know why I keep thinking about Tim Curry. (laughs) (laughs) Tim Curry. He was in Beauty and the Beast, the Enchanted Christmas, so... You know what? Yeah. I have one I just, more no, no, I serious just think, I just answer. think the only good part in that movie. <laughs> I have <laughs> one final serious answer. I believe that Lady Tremaine is the best villain in a Disney sequel. Because Cinderella oh. 3 yeah, that's is right. amazing. <laughs> I actually do like Cinderella 3. One of my favorite. Oh, and Captain Hook for Peter Pan Return to Neverland. Lady Tremaine in frickin' the first movie is just about, no, you can't go to the ball. She's she's a villain. She locks her in the room and stuff, but honestly, she's, like, not a terrible villain. Like, Lady Tremaine doesn't kill people. I guess it's hinted she may have killed Cinderella's dad, but she's not killing Cinderella. At but least, yeah. <laughs> three comes around, and Lady Tremaine gets that magic wand. She has the power to do it, and she does it. Bam! Fairy Godmother Stone. Bam! I change time itself. Bam! My cat is a fucking man 
with a horse and carriage that is going to take you over a cliff, Cinderella. Let's go. You know, for kids. <laughs> Lady Tremaine yeah. is the best villain in a Disney sequel. I, I stick by that. Good choice. Who's the worst besides Mushu? Mushu. <laughs> besides Mushu. There is no other option. Mushu. <laughs> What about Salouche from Hunchback 2? Ah. Uh, that narcissistic a hole. <laughs> he could kiss himself. I gotta admit, I care little for Hunchback Notre Dame 2 to the point where I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I know because I had. I, I Well, I didn't have to watch the movie. I just did just because I'm one of the, I haven't watched any of the Disney sequels in like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my gosh, he is so egotistical. I know that's part of his character, but he was just annoying. Ugh. And then a uh, Little Mermaid too, which I know it's not a good movie. It's just lazy. But I think I it is a good movie. I like it. I like it because it's <laughs> Um, more rock. Eh. Honestly, I I don't know who to pick for this. I I don't. Because they're all kind of bad. <laughs> like, even the good ones are kind of bad. <laughs> like, I was going to pick Maleficent from Descendants, but that's technically not a Disney sequel. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I guess the Disney sequels themselves are the villains. Especially Ooh. Mushu. Especially Mushu. Man, you were one of my favorite Disney sidekicks. The reason why you're not my favorite is because of Mulan 2. He was my favorite. He was my absolute favorite, and then Mulan 2. It's on her on everything. Well, thanks, Jeannie. Jeannie, you're, you're officially my favorite Disney sidekick. Oh, and you too, Pascal. Love I like Pascal. Pascal's a good pick. Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Speaking of television, remember how we were talking about Dr. Doof earlier? Uh, yes. So this next question is, what are your thoughts on TV villains? And spoilers, there's going to be some spoilers, especially for you, Callum, because I'm going to be talking about someone. Mm. You've, you've had your chats, Callum, spoilers. Yeah, I'm sorry. Although I, I have, to be fair, I have seen various images of Cassandra with the blue hair around the internet for some time, so yeah. <laughs> we, we warned about the spoilers. <laughs> um, again, I, I do think Dr. Doofenshmirtz is the funniest villain. Most effective villain, definitely not. Um, I, honestly, if we're talking about TV show villains, I would be reminisced if I didn't bring up Emperor Zerg from the Buzz Lightyear series. Because in that show, Zerg is a full character played by Tim Curry. It's magnificent. It's wonderful. Oh, shit, Tim Curry plays him? No Tim Curry plays Zerg. <laughs> I think it's Tim Curry. Wait, really? Oh god, what if it's I'm, not? I'm, I've done this I'm, before. Check, 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 <laughs> check, check. I'm gonna check this, because I'm about to say, like... Uh, that guy named... Kevin Michael Richardson, who usually plays big tough guys, particularly Gantu from Lilo and Stitch. Trigon mm. from the later Teen Titan episodes. Yeah, and he uh, and Tari. He, does, he does a variety too. He does the mango from Samurai Jack. It's amazing how his voice can I go think to it's Tim Curry. It I'm sounds like Tim stuff. Curry. You better be right about this. I freaking love Tim Curry. If it's not Tim Curry, someone is doing an impression of Tim Curry. <laughs> That's kind of... I also like a Nosferatu. Played by Nosferatu? No, Nosferatu. That's his name in the TV series. Oh. It's, the ro it's, the robo it's the robotic vampire that feeds on robots. All right. Uh, Bill Cipher and Little Gideon. Are both good picks. Yes. Doctor Dragon and Shigo, and oh. pretty much any of the other villains from Kim Possible. <laughs> Dragon specifically, though. Dragon and Shigo specifically. 
Like they're the two that got into the uh, they're the two that got into the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I found who voiced uh, Emperor Zerg. Is it not? Is it not it's Tim not Curry? Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah. Where was Lightyear for the last time? Who is it? Because they sound like Tim Curry. It's. Oh, it's Wayne Knight. Oh, he was a uh, Jack O' Lantern in Grim Adventures, and he's also Dojo in Shaolin Showdown. Oh, really? That's neat. Uh, well, uh, anyways, back to Zerg for just a second. Zerg in this movie is very similar to Hades in the fact that he's just sort of done with everything. Not this movie, this show. He's kind of done with everything, but he's still so fun to watch. <laughs> Like, there's one scene where Zerg is about to die, and he does what he does in freaking Toy Story 2, where he's like, No, Buzz! I am your father! And Buzz just goes, What? And Zerg plays it up for a second, and then he punches him in the face and knocks him out, and he's like, You're so gullible! <laughs> and then he just <laughs> walks away! <laughs> I'm just saying, Zerg is so good at that show, and, like, I legit love Emperor Zerg. I have a figure of Zerg. I adore him. And it's mostly because of this TV show. <laughs> and that yeah. design, man. Yeah, Jeez, I also like yeah, I also like uh, Gravitina uh, and Nosferite too. Yes. Especially Nosferite too. Uh, Star cool. vs. the Forces of Evil has a good villain. Yeah. Um, I should also mention... Um... Uh, Gargoyle has plenty of nuanced villains like David Xanatos, uh, Demona, Macbeth. Um, you got uh, oh, who else uh, was on there? You got uh, Power Ranger Pete Fox. That's it. Um, you got wait, 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 uh, wait. What about Power Rangers? No, no. Fox and uh, her gang were pretty much like Power Rangers. Oh. <laughs> Ellen, I'm glad you said Power Rangers there because you reminded me that there was a good chunk of time that Power Rangers was a Disney TV show. Yes. And now I get to talk about Mez Mezagog. <laughs> Yay! Oh, from Dino Thunder, yes. Mezagog is one of the best-looking masks, I guess? He looks dude, like dude, a dude, dinosaur dude, man. Dude, dude, it, dude, give me nightmares. Look, I rewatched Dino Thunder a few months back. The dude looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> he doesn't look human at all to me. He looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> and he's creepy. He is cunning. He's a great villain. Of course, Vinjex from RPM, who is probably Power Rangers' best villain, considering he takes over the world and starts an apocalypse. <laughs> oh, Emperor Grom from SPD... Grum's a good pick, too. He uses, like, diversion tactics all the time. He had a lot of victories. <laughs> yeah, and us, yeah, and then there's Mora or Morgana, which I was like, oh. And, of course, the best villain that Disney has to offer. Zon whether it's on the big screen, whether it's on the small screen. Do Dr. Hamster Veal from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> Hamster Veal! Hamster Veal is not actually the best villain think, ever. I'm being facetious. I think Hamster Veal, I think, believe, I think he is voiced by Jeff Bennett. Oop! Sorry, Diablo! I want to explain why he's uh, not similar to Iago, actually. Yeah, Jeff Bennett. Yeah, Jeff Bennett voices Johnny Bravo. Yeah, like what Cal just said. It's calm. Yes. Um, I, I think the TV yeah. villains are great, but I, I do think it's time oh, to... Oh, and also, yes, we gotta talk about Tangled just for a second, just for a oh, second. Oh yeah, go ahead. Freaking love Tangled the series, okay? <laughs> out of all the ones that turned the, that well, no, went from movies to TV series, there's Aladdin. I like, I like Aladdin. That one's probably my, my second favorite, but Tangled. Varian, Cassandra, Zontiri, <laughs> Freaking Zontiri is a witch. <laughs> she is a witch. She is a manipulator. Turn Cassandra evil. Like, freaking Cassandra as a villain was pretty good, too. <laughs> she has some really good songs. She had uh, Crossing the Line, 
nothing left to lose. I wish Zon Terry had a villain song, though. That would, if, Zon, if Zon Terry had a villain song, I mean, I would like her more, but, like, I like Cassandra more as a villain. <laughs> but, yeah. I honestly think Tangled, the series, has to be commended. Mostly because it has multiple villains with multiple villain songs. All of them are different. All of them are intriguing. And with Cassandra specifically, she has multiple villain songs. So I, I, I love everything the Tangled series did. Yes, yes. Like I said, Zon Terry. I actually thought Zon Terry was a man. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously, oh. I, was like, I was like, oh, it's, it's a demon. It's, it's a dude. But then I found out in season, you know, late season two and season three, I was like, oh, Zon Terry is a girl. Also, another episode in regards to Halloween where uh, uh, there's a ghost that haunts the uh, ugly duckling. The snuggly duckling, oh, rather. Oh, Ruthless Ruth. Yes, Ruthless Ruth. I just watched that episode about two weeks ago. I mean, hey, Tangled's a good show, man. Um, but the answer Take is DuckTales has Woo-hoo. the best villains. DuckTales does. <laughs> Magicka Dispel. Magicka Dispel. Bulba just showed up in a Darkwing episode, Spoilers. which I will talk about in the future. Ah, it's on YouTube for everyone to see for free. <laughs> I'm allowed to spoil it. Um, are you suggesting they're the best one? Because there's multiple ones we could pick. We could pick like uh, oh, Demona or Cipher. We could pick what you just mentioned from Doctors. We could mention Cassandra. I mean, if we had to pick the best one, um, I mean, I'm ashamed that I can't really talk about Avengers or Smightiest Heroes here because there's so many good villains in that. But um, I feel like Marvel is cheating. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I, probably some of the most iconic TV villains, definitely like Dr. Draken, mm. the people from Gargoyles. Bill Cipher is going to be that. Bill Cipher. Yep. Especially in the mm. Comic Con. Yeah, Zon Terry, Cassandra, Barian. Barry is out everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I guess if I had to pick a best one of all the ones I'd talk about, I, I really like Zerg. But uh, I I gotta go back to Yzma. I, I love Yzma, and she is really good in Emperor's New School. Cool, yeah. So I, I pick Yzma twice. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. I pretty much pick anyone from Tangled. Callum, <laughs> you gotta pick Bill I, I just pick anyone from Tangled. Yeah, but, hey, or oh, Disney Kim Possible. Dr. Jack and perfect, and Disney villain. I would pick um, probably three. I'd pick Bill Cipher, Demona, and Xanatos. Those three. Definitely good picks. Next yes. question. Next question. Phew! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yes, this one here. If you had to marry a Disney villain, which one would you marry? (laughs) (laughs) Hades. F, marry or kill. (laughs) Oh, that'd be a challenge. (laughs) No, no, that's not it. No. So... Remember when we reacted to... Oh, no, I wouldn't say reacted to. Remember when we reviewed... Aladdin 2019, how that was my very first time being the Disney Plus pals with you guys. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on the live action villains? We can talk about, we're going to talk about both the remake and like the other ones that are not from the remake. So like the Sanderson sisters or any of the Pirates of the Caribbean people. Mm. So Live action villains in general, not just remake, live action villains, right. Live okay, action this- villains. Barbosa is a big one. I was thinking about the same thing, yes. Um, I mean, what's there not to say about Barbosa? He is legitimately, like, technically you can make the argument that he is a good guy because he's just trying to end a curse. He's going about it in a way that any pirate would by stealing and plundering. And he has one of the coolest scenes where him and Jack are, like, fighting each other and they both turn into skeletons. It's so cool. Love Barbosa. Are we going to fight each other till the day come and trumpet sound? Oh, you could surrender. That that voice that uh, Gregory Rush 
provided for him. It's so iconic. And you can tell he's just mm. eating up every scene he's in. I, Not I think people. if Jack Sparrow wasn't there to, like, be, like, you know, because Jack Sparrow has this personality we had never seen before ba Jack Sparrow. So because of that, everyone latched onto it. But Barbosa is pirate, pirate, pirate. Like, he is there to be a pirate. And oh my god, he is a pirate. <laughs> That's nice. So, what are your thoughts? Oh, sorry. sorry. I want to say one thing about Barbosa. One of my favorite uh, cliffhanger scenes of all time is when uh, they're announcing you, sh you need someone to guide you to find Jack Sparrow. You see your footsteps. Everyone's going, and then you see a familiar face, and you just get chills down his spine, and he goes, So tell me, what has become of my ship? <laughs> I also really like, uh, do you believe in ghost stories, Lass? Because you're in one. Mm. Uh, but go ahead, sure. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, what do you think about the remake villains? You know, like Jafar, Scar, Maleficent, Queen of Hearts, Gaston. Uh, I the say this. I say this. Sadly, unfortunately, and I say this with such a sigh. Queen of Hearts is probably the best one. <laughs> because, at least Queen of Hearts... Acts like Queen of Hearts, you know? Off with your head. I mean, of course, the movies are too serious, and of course, like, they're shot in a way that I'm not a fan of. That's a car. But, um... <laughs> like, that's that's Tim Burton's fault. That's not uh, Helena Bottom Carter's fault. And she does a fine job with what she's given. No wonder they divorced. I just don't like how the Queen of Hearts looks. <laughs> She looks so weird to me. Like, she's got such a huge head. She doesn't look like the Queen of Hearts. Except for, you know, the, the, the heart lips and stuff. I uh, say also, I have to give credit to uh, uh, Kate Blanchett as uh, Lady Tremaine. She was mm. actually, I actually liked her performance. She oh, had my favorite really like in Live Action Cinderella. Mm. I didn't yeah, watch... It really Cinderella, the live action one, unfortunately. Yeah, I wasn't uh, into it. I mean, the only thing I wanted to watch live action Cinderella was because I wanted mm -hmm. to go see that Frozen Fever short. Callum, are you eating an apple during a recording? We have rules about eating. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay Will to you eat an apple because he's supposed to be the evil queen, the evil, the evil king, right? No, he's the evil queen. You said it, and that's how it is. <laughs> Mm. Yes. Uh, Callum, what do you, what, I know you talked about Barbosa. What do you think about the, the remake villains? Um, Kate Blanchett actually does do a great performance as um, Lady Tremaine. Obviously quite different, but still quite effective. And uh, you get some hints of jealousy and um, hints of um, other things. Kate Blanchett, a fantastic actress um, and, and all that. Um, other villains, uh, obviously, they're kind of iffy. Um, but you know what? I rescind what I said about the Queen of Hearts because she sucks too. Gaston's the best one. Played by uh, Luke, Luke Evans, Evans, right? Yeah, Luke, Luke yeah. Evans. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, say probably, I say probably one of the worst ones would probably be either the dude that plays Jafar or maybe Scar. Well, I mean, I guess Scar's performance wasn't bad. I think, ne no, never mind. You know, Jafar was the worst one. I'm sorry. I like the original Cruella de Vil. I was uh, going to oh, say. Oh, are you talking about the live action Cruella de Vil? With the yeah, Glenn the original live action one. I mean. The Glenn, Glenn Close. Yeah, mm. she was good too. Actually, she, she overacted and it was glorious. Yep, and now Emma Stone is supposed to play Cruella. They That's going to be that interesting. Song. They better have the song. <laughs> or I'm not I, watching I'm, the movie. I'm, okay, so I know you guys are not going to like about this. I kind of like Angelia Jolie as Maleficent. And you are allowed to, and that is completely okay. Just like how yeah. I am allowed to loathe her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, like, yeah. Yeah, and my, I feel like she, she was just the best part of Maleficent. 
Well, hmm. I, if everything else was just kind of boring. Yeah. And I, I just didn't really think that Elle Fanning was a good choice of Aurora. No offense, but... Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think the reason why we hate Angelina Jolie's role as uh, Maleficent was not so much her, because she did work with the best with what she got. It was the film surrounding her that made us say, oh, what have they done to Maleficent? Because she did do her best. Like, there are some scenes where she's acting her heart out, like, scene where she got her wings cut out, like, yikes, that is, uh, like, painful. Um, the- and then she was kind of reciting the, some of the lines from the original Sleeping Beauty. I thought that, was, that wasn't that bad. But everything else is like when she, I feel like every time I watch Maleficent, I just can't help but thinking of my favorite Broadway musical in which Idina Menzel was originally this character wanting to defy gravity. And now the movie has a setback. <laughs> but still regardless, uh, yeah. I, I think Angelina Jolie probably would have been a good choice for Maleficent had she actually been Maleficent and not this new version. Like, if she, if we got, like, a Sleeping Beauty remake with Angelina Jolie as Maleficent and she had the green makeup, she was actually acting like evil Maleficent, I think she would have nailed it. But I, I don't like this version that was given to us, in my opinion. Oh, I also like uh, the dude that did uh, Shere Khan in the live-action Jungle Book. I thought he was good, too. He was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I did like a more serious one. And there was more mentions to the Jungle Law from the from the books on, on this character's part. Even though we don't see him uh, do too much of a role, I think lots of people will say, Oh, he doesn't do much. He just waits around. Um, there's a bit of a cunning. I, there is a bit, a bit of a respect mm-hmm. for him. I really like how he respects the jungle law to the extent that he won't kill Mowgli right at the peaceful gathering. But when he comes back, you will look for him. You will find him. And he will eat him. Honestly, I think Dr. Facilier would work really good in live action. Yes, he already I, did. I, I really, uh, yeah, in the Sinister, yeah, he's already in. Oh, and Once Upon a Time. Well, specifically, like, I'm talking about Friends on the Other Side, done live-action style. Like, like I'm just yeah, thinking like, about... Like, like, the Hocus Pocus mm. spectacular, yeah. Well, I'm specifically thinking about, like, how they did, um, friggin' that Mysterio uh, illusion scene in Spider-Man Far From Home, and just how much they played with all of these interesting visuals and cool scenes. Just imagining what they could do with friends on the other side and Dr. Facilier's changing colors and the skull appearing on his face and all of the voodoo dolls playing the drums. I, I, I think I, that could I be. Who, I wonder who would make a good Dr. Facilier. Mm-hmm. But um, my, my final thought on the matter is uh, I think Anthony Mackie would actually be a pretty good Dr. Facilier. He even has the tooth gap. Um, but my final thought on the ad the matter of live action Disney villains is technically Harry Hook is that too. So Harry Hook is the best one. (laughs) Yes. Uh, So we talked about this one earlier, but this is a two parter question. Uh, The songs. No, not the songs. Here's the, here's the first part. What makes a Disney villain so iconic and malicious? And then the second part, we talked about this when we were talking about favorite and least favorite villain. Do you think the Disney twist villains are a good thing or a bad thing? Neil, we'll start with you. Oh, um, well, what makes them so iconic? Uh, I think the answer is a little more surprising than people would think. It's not that hard to make a really good Disney villain, like specifically this. Like everybody's like, all the best villains are the ones that you can get behind and understand. And I'm like, yeah, no, I wouldn't say those are the best. I would say those are pretty cool villains. (laughs) But I think the best villains are the ones you like love to hate. And to be fair, there's a lot of reasons to hate all of these villains, but yet something keeps bringing us back to them. And I think it's these two big things, and it's this easy. An original personality that is so interesting to watch, 
and a good design. I think that's all you need for a really good Disney villain. Like, look at Yzma. There is not another character out there that looks how Yzma looks. Except for Zontiri. <laughs> eh, yeah. well, Yzma I came suppose, first. <laughs> yeah, you got to consider that other villains probably were inspired by these Disney villains, so take that into account. But also the way Yzma acts. Like, she's outgoing, she's funny, but she's, like, conniving, and she's scheming, and she is trying to hold on to fame. Like, Yzma's whole motivation in my mind is, oh, she peaked. Like, she, she wants to peak and have the power. Because she thinks she deserves it, and in some degrees, maybe she does, because she is working hard for the kingdom. But I think if you have a good, interesting personality, like Gaston being so full of himself, to the point where LeFou even, like, loves him, to the like, Hades being this character who's, like, done with it, but is so charming and so evil. And Hades' design. Hoof. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Dr. Facilier having this sleek, these long arms, this skinny body, and his smile, as big as the Cheshire Cats itself, and how he is just so good at tricking you into thinking he's right. I'm just saying, Disney villains, all you need. Good personality, good story that they get to show off that personality with, good design. And That's do you it. Think that, and do you think that the Disney twist villains like Hans and uh, Yo-Kai, Don, uh, Don Bellwether, do you think those twist villains are a good thing or a bad thing? I think Marvel is starting to pick up on like what I just said with like the frigate, their villains, and they're starting to adapt to it. And I think I'm bringing up Marvel because one of the better examples of this working, like a twist villain in my mind, is Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, and I think it works because Ego beforehand, like he's in the movie tons and he's bonding with his son. He is demonstrating good, kind behavior to the point where it's revealed, no, I killed people. It's actually kind of a shock, and you go, oh, okay, Ego's going to be the villain. And I think that's a neat take. When it comes to, like, the guy from Coco... Oh, I knew, uh, Ernesto de la Cruz. I knew he was the villain as soon as I saw his design. <laughs> like, the second I saw, like, him playing the guitar in his human form, I was like, okay, this is a bad dude. <laughs> And then when he finally gets there, yeah, he's a bad dude. And it turns out Hector is, like, the good guy. Yeah, um, I, as much as I love Coco, I did kind of see that coming. And it's pretty much the same thing with me, similarly, with uh, Big Hero 6. As soon as I saw, um, oh, shoot, what's the teacher's name? Uh, I don't remember his name either. I don't remember his name either. I know it's, Yo I know it's Yokai. It's not, it's, the... not, it's, not, it's not Alex the Craig. It's, uh, what's his He's face? the guy in the kabuki mask. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say his name. But, like, as soon as I saw him, and, I saw, and as soon as I saw how hostile and uncomfortable he was with the with the competitor, I knew that he was gonna be the villain. I'm gonna search this dude. Callahan! There we go. I knew it! Callahan! <laughs> Robert Callahan. Yep, I was right. Yeah, I knew he was gonna be the villain. And then, like, with Zootopia, I knew that Don Bellwether was gonna be the the villain mm -hmm. because you know it's okay. like oh predators you know they're yes. he's wrong with the predators so obviously it has to be one of the prey i knew it was and, gonna be the sheep yeah, yeah. i knew it was, it's a, it's it's literally like a, a wolf in sheep's clothing or in this case a sheep in wolf's clothing i don't know how that works <laughs> callum you've been trying to say something yeah um this recent trend of uh disney villain twist um it can work if it works along with a story. I think the reason why people find this trend so jarring is because uh, when it's revealed who they really are, it kind of comes out of the blue with mm. almost no prior build-up. Um, you can make it work with either um, either prior build-up or making it work with a story. Making it work with a story, you have uh, characters like... Uh, um, De, De La Cruz from uh, Coco, 
Um, yeah, we all saw it coming, but it works for the story, which is about reuniting with your family and learning about what matters most in life and, and remembering. And it really works. It adds the tension to the story when we're, we know what, what his real motivation is. Mm. Um, an example of building up a character would be Stinky Pete from Toy Story 2. Um, he was That's warm and welcoming. Uh, you can get a hint that, a uh, uh, pretty good hint that he's quite eager that Woody stay with them in order to pass on the legacy of the, uh, of the toys. And he's suggesting it's a dangerous world out there. And if you go back, then you're going get, to get neglected. But if you come with us, you'll stay forever. And you better stay forever, because we want, we want this legacy to live forever, okay? So when he doesn't get what he wants, he has to take matters into his own hands. That's when he becomes the villain. Okay, yeah. So what That's do you think makes too. a Disney villain so iconic and malicious? Uh, what makes a Disney villain so iconic and malicious? Um, well, thinking about what makes the classic ones look, work, you've got to have someone antagonizing the, the main character, make it a legitimate threat, make it memorable. Yeah, the design is everything to do with it. Uh, make it mm. obvious that they're uh, evil so that um, the people will um, know who it is that they're against. I think it's just the whole good versus evil vibe that Disney is so well known for and they established it by having quite a distinct villain. Um, some would say sometimes the villain would take too much of the spotlight, but over time they find a middle ground, but then in modern day they focus more on the heroes other than the villains, as we're clearly telling. Um, although they still manage to find a middle ground every now and then. And, um, in terms of the so in terms of the classic villains, it's just a, a case of classic good versus evil. In terms of the modern Disney villain, I think it's a case of making the story work. Like um, I think another example would be Charles Munts from Up. Um, uh, someone to look up to but then as the story goes along he's um going a bit too far so they have to avoid him and stuff like that so uh like neil said before the design it also goes into it uh, uh, especially with classic and modern the song also delves into their motivation and uh, you know in a catchy way and um you've got to build them up so that the heroes will eventually overcome it to get that well-deserved happily ever after. Um, I think that's what makes the Disney villain stand out, if you ask me. And I, I do have one final thing to say about, like, the twist villains. Specifically because while Callum was talking about, like, how, oh, the story needs to support it, I think the best one, like, literally the best twist villain Disney has is uh, King Candy. Because oh, yeah. King oh, Candy yeah. from Red Red Because that, the that. reason I say this is they bring up like how, oh, well, there was this character named Turbo. He was technically a glitch. And they're bringing that up in relation to freaking Vanellope. And you don't even think for even a second, oh, maybe it's King Candy. And then... At the end, when they reveal it, and they reveal Vanellope was supposed to be part of the game all along, it's such a good twist that answers so many questions. Oh, and I, I, I think, like, Turbo being uh, King Candy is probably something that makes the movie even better. Especially because that movie's whole thing is, like, what is it to be a villain? And King Candy has to be the answer to that question. Yeah, like 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 you guys said for me, like you know, iconic, malicious, you know, definitely the design, personality, the song, their presence. Don't be one dimensional, <laughs> please do not be one dimensional. Mm. Especially the iconic laugh. You got you gotta have that the, the iconic laugh. Whether you're Maleficent, whether you're Jafar, Jafar I think has the best villain laugh. His laugh is so insane. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god. I, I think an example of a character that doesn't really work, even though they do have like a good design. So I think they kind of fall apart in uh personality is Sean Yu from Mulan. Oh yeah. yeah even I then think, he's, he he yeah. serves his function. 
Yeah, I think Sean Yu is probably one of the more forgettable villains. I mean, I was scared of him as a kid. For some reason, I thought he was wearing mascara. Because <laughs> his eyes, right? His <laughs> eyes are like the most iconic part of him. The fact that his eyes are so black, but his freaking uh, irises are yellow. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just oh. don't really... It's, and also, he wasn't really in the movie that much, so he's kind of forgettable. And then you have, like, General Ratcliffe from Pocahontas. I mean... Yeah, Ratcliffe's that not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but someone like Maleficent, when you when you first see Maleficent, when she comes when she comes out and she has Diablo with her, you feel it. You I felt that intimidation. Versus uh, on like Hades, like I said earlier before, you know, James Woods, he did like this like car salesman impression and that's how he got the role. That's why he's so funny, that's why he's so iconic. And then you got, like, you know, Jafar, his, his presence, mm. his funny, you know, interactions with all the other characters, how he's very sarcastic. Um, Evil Queen. Hey, Snow White and Seven Dwarves. You know, if it wasn't for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, we wouldn't have Lady Tremaine. We wouldn't have mm. Maleficent or Ursula, Jafar, Hades, Frollo. We wouldn't Evil have Evil Queen had to be the first. Yeah, Evil Queen was the first. Which is why her name is literally Evil Queen. <laughs> well, technically, her, her actual name is Queen Grimhilda. I wish we called her that. <laughs> That's a better name. I say probably the last good, quote unquote, good one. It was what was will, do, will definitely be like, you know, between like Mother Gothel and King Candy. Like after definitely after King Candy, that's when it starts kind of. I mean, I was shocked when Hans was the villain in Frozen. I know some people were like, nah, obviously he was going to be the villain, but I was shocked. But then you started getting, like, Callahan and Dawn, Bellwether, Screen Slaver, and it's just, it kind of just got predictable at that point. I hope that oh, new no. movie with, like, the dragon girl, the girl who's trying oh, to find the Rhea. last dragon. Rhea, Rhea, yeah, Rhea and the last dragon. Or Raya. Raya? Raya? I hope we get a good Raya. villain in that. I don't know if it's going to be. I feel like it's probably going to go to the same route as, like, Moana. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope she finds the dragon and then it's revealed, yo, I'm the dark keeper of this dragon. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> um, a, lot, a lot of people saying ja the dragon friend that she makes is the last dragon. Maybe. But, um... I, I do want to bring this up. Uh, this could be the last thing we say about this question. Um... Because we brought up Governor Radcliffe, uh, and we've brought up Jonathan Young. His cover of Radcliffe's song, so good! <laughs> Just, yeah. I, I like Radcliffe's song in general, but, like, Jonathan Young's version is like, yes, please. <laughs> corporate, corporate business. <laughs> Just the way that he's like, it's mine, boys, mine for the taking, it's mine, boys, now mind me that gold... Dig, boys. It's so good. It's a real yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I also like savages. I like sav. I like when he did savages with with uh, Caleb. Yeah, that was good. Really enough, Redcliffe has two pretty good songs. Yeah, it's just his character. It's just mm. you know what, Pocahontas in general has really good songs. I don't know why it didn't get bigger than it did. Well, technically, it did, it did win an Oscar for. Best original song for Colors of the Wind, so. Oh, okay. Well, Colors of the Wind absolutely deserves it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why either. They were intending Pocahontas to be the absolute masterpiece, and uh, I can hardly blame them. Going into a film with as serious themes as they did, I mean, I can hardly blame them. It's kind of ironic that their B team came up with the, the bigger phenomenon. At yeah, the time. Yep. But, um, next. next question. Next question. Oh, this How one. How left? Oh yeah, this one's a pretty simple one. If you can have any Disney villain power or ability, which one would you choose and why? Hades. Why did I have a feeling you were going to say that? Because <laughs> I want to be god of the underworld, damn it. <laughs> Just chilling out in the underworld, having unlimited power. <laughs> yeah, I pick that. <laughs> uh, I do think Dr. Facilier is actually the wrong answer here because if you remember um, he did get to make deals with his friends on the other side but the second he couldn't pay up 
they they found another way he could pay. <laughs> and he died. <laughs> I also think Ursula is probably the Yeah, one. Ursula Ursula's necklace. I would definitely want Ursula's necklace in my own. Yes, but her powers, like I feel like the fact that she has to deal in contracts. I I think that limits her a bit. Um, honestly, cool Disney power would be Yzma. I would love to have, like, just a collection of vials <laughs> that turn people into animals. <laughs> because then I could turn someone into a flea, then I could put them in a box, then I could send the box <laughs> to my house, and then I could hit it with a hammer. <laughs> it's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant planet, too. Genius, I think. Yes, yes it is. Uh, definitely for me, Maleficent. I'm so biased. I'm so biased with her. I just freaking love the love of the horns and being able to turn into a dragon only to get stabbed in the heart, but it's okay. Question. I still like her staff and Diablo and stuff. And Question. If I, if, if I pick Tamatoa, does that mean I finally get to be beautiful? <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> and Tamatoa. <laughs> oh, oh, God, I just turned into like a vampire from Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I didn't want this. <laughs> Put it on yourself, Robert Pattinson oh, yeah, would be. Hades. Who would you yeah, pick, Cal? Hades. Whose powers um, do you want? I was thinking about it for a while, but thinking about the face of the villain today, I was thinking to myself, hmm, maybe I don't want to be too evil. Perhaps I could just borrow Xanatos's equipment, just get that iron gargoyle suit, and t- go for a ride, as well as the, <laughs> all the other equipment. Cal, I love, I love that you were like, I don't want to be too evil, and yet I was like, I want to be fucking king of the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I want to be the mistress of all evil. Yeah, me and Cher would be like, we would be like a tag team. <laughs> like, we would combine our powers and rule the well, earth. Well, we, we did create a child. Oh yeah, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> Descendants! <laughs> This little girl, are you talking to a girl? Oh yeah, that's true. I also get like a really cool tambourine and a song where I talk about abandonment. And I get a and I get a song about telling my daughter, "Don't you want to be evil?" Like- you know what, Cher? We are a power couple. I'm into this. <laughs> Me and Cher are gonna take over the Disney World. Enjoy your jetpack, Gal. <laughs> Prepare for double. Prepare, prepare, prepare for trouble. <laughs> and make it double. <laughs> I'll be able to afford three years now for my uh, collection. I'm just saying, Iron Man don't do shit when I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. The moment you've all been waiting for. The moment you've all been waiting for. Never in It is time for the Disney villain battle! <laughs> <laughs> 